than ever it's the unofficial 40 from soonerscoop.com now here's the entire sooner scoop crew carrie josh eddie and bob all right we are back it is another edition of the unofficial 40 podcast with the entire crew is here and boy i feel like eddie and i just need to let you two go i mean it seems like we've done enough of this shit lately i'm i'm reformed right now i feel, yes. i feel a lot better you're than ready I for did. saturday i feel all right well i don't know about ready but <laughs> i i feel a lot better than i did on sunday is that because of brent yesterday just being feisty with everybody and maybe a little bit jalen daniels is hurt well i will we'll wait and see on that but i mean i, I just don't think that that guy, the the reputation that, that guy has for working for the athletic and all that, like, surely that guy's not wrong. Oh, I, I no, think, it's gamesmanship again. I I think that there could be a situation that I I don't believe that he'll play on Saturday, but season ending, season, I could maybe be talked into maybe he coming back yeah, if it's earlier. A, if than it's like, a sprained shoulder, sure. like I it's mean, four weeks and not seven. Sure, so technically, so, yeah. so the news to him might be that he's out for the season. Yeah, like I, I would be very, very, very surprised if Jalen Daniels was able to play on Saturday. But yeah. uh, shit, I mean that just means that Jason Bean is coming to kill me. So he's coming to finish. He almost he did started. It last he's coming to finish me <laughs> after he uh, yeah, after what he started, he started last <laughs> yeah. year. So. Uh, no, I, I do feel a lot better about, I think just the program as a whole, do but you? well, not, not Why? better, it's, not better in terms of how I expect them to play. They obviously, they got a long way to go on that shit, but I think from a, maybe it does have a lot to do with how Brent handled things yesterday. But that's the, the same guy thing last Tuesday. I thought, I, I thought, thought it was, I, I, I thought, thought yesterday, spicy. I thought yesterday was more like he was calling us as out. matter of fact, yeah. if you will. I think he was a little shell shocked two weeks ago. Yeah, it seems like he kind of and he was probably gathered a, himself together, yeah, and was kind of back to being the leader of the Oklahoma football program. I, that's fair, like, and I, I do this. I think Saturday too it was, it was just like everything was just so in the moment that it was like that was almost depressing watching that post game press conference and how long they took. I think it was like uh, no, anger was building as well <laughs> in, as a part of I'm that. I'm leaving. I'm going to talk to Levy and Farouk and them. I'm not staying for this. Yeah. So like I, I do yeah, think Bob though did that out of there awfully fast. There was there there was a level of uh you know certainly disappointment within everything that happened over the last couple of days. But I thought yesterday that's the tone that you want to hear from Brent Venables. I thought the coaches show on Monday night was really good driving yeah. home from practice. Yeah. Just that kind of stuff that's like when you're in this like this this hellhole that they in the are mud. in right now, in the I mean and they're in like they're knee deep in this shit. It it does you want a little bit of I don't know reprieve or some some type of leadership and voice and saying like everything's going to be okay. And I feel calm like you, down. You get that from Braden Willis and Deshaun White. Too. Sure, I, I hopefully it translates because I really feel those guys are the are the pulse of the team and I think they really understand what's going on. But I also think this this week has been a little bit about, you know, let's make sure we don't lose this team. No, this is a it's big picture yeah. stuff yeah. this week. I mean, it's, you know, Brett basically said that he went through the entire schedule of the 2005-2009 seasons with the team and the team kind of said the same thing. Yeah. Which, you know, I think we can get into here in a little bit. I you know, there there's going to have to be some stuff that Brent Venables looks at as a head coach, yes. as a first year head coach that says, am I doing too much here? Am I doing too much there? And I, well, I've Bob been, asked him the question yesterday. I've been uh, a little surprised. I was very proud of you. I've, I've been a little surprised that like Matt Wells hasn't stepped in and maybe he has and said, hey, maybe we should restructure this. Maybe these meetings are going too long. Maybe like I don't know about the physicality in practice as much as right. it is. Just a mental, mental drain. That's where I was going with with that question, and I get I I was thinking as an all encompassing. Hey, ever since Lincoln left, like what these guys have been through, you know, Brent didn't quite take it that way and just took it more toward the season itself. Sure. But mentally, they look fried. I don't know about physically, but mentally, this team looks th- well. Just think done. Of, here's something that we haven't brought up is you know this was you remember going back to the spring, uh, everything was in the morning. And that's because Lincoln Riley, yeah, the way he point. told the team is set up your schedule so he can practice in the morning and then 
the rest of the day you get your work done at school, your school stuff done. I don't give a damn if you're going to class. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> so kind of, I'm, I'm joking, but. Uh, well, the, but so anyway, now Brent, like, I have, I never remember a time where it's eight o'clock when I'm leaving the practice it's, field, yeah. like this week. At, uh, the, at the earliest. Yeah. It's yeah. Eight, or the, all this, this <laughs> I year. I mean, we're starting at eight. We're starting at eight yeah. on Mondays, for those that don't. It is don't a know. really long day for those guys. And, you know, I know they had to switch back to an evening schedule. And maybe there's some things with classes and, you know, uh, there's always players every year that like, though they can't talk, they have a class on Tuesday nights. Uh, so, like, you have these little things here. And I think we've seen, like, Jared Canick leaving practice early before, uh, going to a class. and um, I know Mims has a couple times. Mims has done that. Uh, but, like, maybe that's part of it, too, is that yeah. this switch back to the schedule after, you know, several years of practicing in the mornings, you know, and maybe the days are too long because it's 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 you know a little unorganized because they had to switch from that morning to evening schedule. Sure, and you know, I, I that I really hadn't even thought about it that way, but I think that that is something that like that's part of that's like a small part of this big picture. That at the end of the day, Josh, I mean, the last two weeks. It's, oh, Josh, yeah, well, you just it's, 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 <laughs> it's ignore it's, him completely. It's the two it's the two most embarrassing weeks in the history of. Oklahoma football. I mean, I I don't know how you get away, at least from the modern era. And I mean, you know, I Carrie and I talked about it on the post game pod. Just as far as you can handle getting beat, the way that they're getting beat, the way that they're getting manhandled is it's it's flat out worrisome. That that's absolutely a thing because everybody keeps making this Nick Saban comparison in year one, and I, I I think there are things there that I could buy into, and I'm not trying to say Brent's going to be Nick. I don't want to get too far down that road, but I can get the point that you're driving at. Like, okay, when you're making a drastic change in culture and ideals and those, like, there are things that are going to be problematic and they're going to cause you maybe some stumbles that wouldn't have happened if you would have just left it as status quo. But you go back and look at that 2007 Alabama team, like they were losing by seven. They were losing by four. They were losing like there's there's no like holy crap they got kicked that that day. I mean they played some good teams. Obviously they're in the SEC, but there was no there was no moment like that. I mean and they go you know uh, they they beat a, a ranked Tennessee team by three touchdowns. Like there were signs like okay this is trending in the right direction. That that's to me. That's got to start now. Like you, you can okay. You want to let that go? That's fine. But at some point, you have to start to show growth. Like I, I still think that what they're doing, the types of people that believe in Brent Venables, the Todd Bates that left Clemson, the Thad Turnipsey that left Clemson. Like these are guys that know what success looks like. They've been around it, and they thought, I want to follow Brent Venables to Oklahoma. Like that gives me faith that these guys that are on the inside. They know like what's happening. They see it. They, they still believe in it. So, or, you know, they came in believing in it. So I still think there's reason, reason for patience, but you've got to give people something to believe in. And the K State loss. Okay. That, that, you know, again, that kind of happens. It's fine. Whatever. The last two weeks, like uh, I've said it over and over. You, you can't lose like that at a place like Oklahoma. That's just not acceptable. It's, it's uncompetitive football. I mean, it, yeah. it truly is uncompetitive, unbecoming just embarrassing football and you know I, they don't have to be told that uh even if you want to go back to like if, if you don't want to use alabama as the uh you know the barometer just use 98 99 and the turnover that you saw from stoops first team a team uh, you know a staff obviously that brent was on that you know they go seven and five year that year but it was all about losing those leads they led at notre dame they led at texas they were competitive they were making steps in the right direction this thing has been anything but making steps in the right direction. They're going backwards. So, you know, that leads us into this week. And, you know, obviously the, you know, the quarterback situation is, I guess, still in doubt. I I still think you'd have to take a massive step back not to play, talking about Dylan Gabriel. but Or he just doesn't pass it. Yeah. The, you know, you the could feel great pass. and you might not just pass it. Yeah, and I'm not real sure what, like – what technically goes into passing or not passing the test? So I, I thought it was a great sign. He talked to us Monday. Yeah, no, one hundred percent, and he, totally okay. Well, I I don't know how much you can base on on it, and obviously he's been running and doing stuff. I mean, we saw him through pregame, but just the the fact that he had been sweating and like going through workouts, it's like okay, this is he's talking like he's gonna play. So well, and I say this like you know, 
I asked the question because nobody had asked it late in the press conference yesterday, but like watching back, like we were interviewing people at the time, so I didn't see that. But like he, Brent did say that he expects him to play on Saturday on his coach's show, the thing at Rudy's. Yeah. And I, I think that everybody's under the impression that he's going to play. And I, you know, that obviously. Drake Stoops definitely was. Yeah. Drake I, said it on Monday. I know that you guys were over with him. Yeah. I mean, he said, yeah, he's, I, I kind of, I didn't really try and do a gotcha, but it was just kind of like, you know, w- what will it be like to to have Dylan back this right. week? He's like, yeah, we talked about it right. on Sunday and can't wait to have him back out there. So the team's basically moving full speed ahead thinking that they've got Dylan. It, it, it's and so, Brent said Thursday? What did he say? Thursday? Thursday, Thursday would, would be, for sure. and yeah. You know, it's it's all part of this, like, this bigger picture process of what these last couple of weeks have been and everybody wants to talk about the offense and rightfully so but it doesn't matter who the quarterback is on Saturday if they're going to play defense like they have here over the last couple of weeks you know Max Olson put out the stop rate uh statistic this morning first three games 84 percent 17th in the country and the last three games 48 percent 123rd I mean we're talking about uh you know an inability to execute fundamentally and in turn, I'm, the rushing numbers, when you look at them in the graph that you know Gabe had tweeted out yesterday. Big it's, 12 games only. It's Ooh. just, it's incredible. And I, I know that somebody else had told me that on first downs this year, OU's averaging giving up 240 yards. It's, it's incredible. I don't want to dwell on it. I mean, you mean per up. game? I mean, 240 <laughs> yards on a single first down feels like it's a lot. amazing. I, yeah, that's almost unbelievable. One thing, I, I, let's get back to the press conference uh, yesterday because I think there were some other really interesting things that came out of that. Uh, you know, I think, well, obviously Brent challenging everyone. And he's not a stranger to, like, asking questions, but, like, yesterday he was almost going after some people if, if they wanted to. I mean, the... the like Josh, you are like I don't know if you're just being like difficult right now, but it seems like you're fighting back on pretty much every point. Like the Justin Broyles thing. Uh, like there was something else today. It was like is Josh just wanting to fight people? Like what's going on with him? <laughs> but, oh, it, it was the night, the Trevor Knight stuff. Oh yeah, the Trevor Knight stuff, and that was. I mean, he, he took a shot at Trevor Knight at it, it, Rudy's on Tuesday, uh, and then some were saying it was Gabe. No, 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 Gabe. Okay. Gabe knew exactly what was going on because he watched okay. it and he saw it and he laughed. Like, but what, it was. And what he's saying is right, though. What, what Trevor Knight is saying is correct, but you're not going to have correct. the head coach come out and say, "100 percent." Six games but into that's his the thing, like, the when era, Josh is like, "Well, he's right." I was like, "But that's not." I mean, Brent <laughs> Venables is not going to be like. He is absolutely like, like he said. Like everything the media is throwing at us is fair because of the way we're playing. Yeah. Uh, but and I said I time, love that. Like I love that he owned it. The saying the season is a failure, though, and, and allowing that to be said or, or repeated or having former players like he's like, look, you got to realize like this is a team. Like yep. we have to support each other. We we're, we're going to get through this. Like we just have to keep you know fighting and listening to what your coaches are telling you to do. Like it's just like the whole thing he said about not dumbing down the defense so that guys can be freer to make plays. He's like, look, this is our defense. Like. We're going to be running this defense forever. We either get it or we don't. It's not. We're not going to dumb this thing down. We're not going to make it easier for him because it's going to basically, you know, derail any progress that they've made throughout the entire season. Which I agree with that. Like, there is an element though, and I think this is the frustrating thing for people out there that they're like they say, well, you don't have the players to run what you want. You're smart enough defensively as a as a coach in right. the 20 years that you've been, 30 years that you've been doing it. Why can't you do something that will at least resemble something that Oklahoma can use to, st- I mean, hold I'll say them this. to three yards. I'll say this. They're at 4.8 right now, a, a rush. I'll say this. Even if you dumb it down, do you really think the guys that can't follow directions now are going to be any better in a in a simplified defense that doesn't hold them accountable to do their job? Like, well, I there's mean, just going to be mass chaos well, out are, there. Are, like, I just feel like you're leading toward the 2023 class as being your starters on defense. <laughs> it feels like you're going to ruin. A, like, I don't, I don't know what the confidence level of uh, Reggie Grimes is at this moment compared to who he was after Nebraska. You mean if you don't dumb it down, you're going to the last three games, what what does that guy have to hold his 
head on. There was a continued chase to get back to what they had in those first three games. And, you know, I, I guess if they could figure out where that's gone, they would have already done so. But it's obviously night and day different than what it was from, you know, one Danny through three Stutzman. and four yeah. through six. Like, think what's happened to him. If this keeps going in this direction, do you lose him completely? His I, confidence. I mean, you would hope not. I At some point, I he, do think that that stuff is a little overrated and just go play football. You guys, you got, and I think that's where you get into the conversation of, and I, I think there's a lot of people that have said this over the last couple of weeks. Maybe they, they don't have good football players. They need football players instead of athletes. I said that. I, I think, after I think the you've said that Kansas yep. state game. I think that's to, I think that's a valid pro like my whole thing. Like, and I, I to just to, to defend what I'm saying a little bit, what Trevor Knight is saying is true. If you have goals and you don't meet them, you failed. Like, there, there's no other way to say that. At the same time, I get what Brent is saying. He's not going to say that. Like, I understand that completely. But the thing I have to ask, because I didn't see what led into the comment, was he asked directly about that? Like, I think it people was, call, or I, was it a, like an aside where he's like, "Yeah, I know people out here are saying X, Y, Z, and right. I don't care." It, I it think was, it was it more like of, that. Yeah. And so well, it you're, you're shining those, light on a an ugly truth. Right. And it, I think it's one of those things, too, that if you didn't catch it in the moment and you just read, you know, what Brent said, or if you're just getting reactions from people, it's one of those things that the Internet has just blown out of proportion. Yeah. He was yeah. just making an offhand comment that, of course, the season isn't over. And if you read well, yeah. all of Trevor's quote, not just that two line, it's OK. And as a coach, it's kind of like, it, you know, it's kind of like. What are you doing bringing people on, you know, university media that don't have our backs? Like, yeah. as a coach, you're just offended. Like, how he's supposed to be one of us. Like, how how can he? What Trevor's doing a podcast. I mean, he's trying to get listeners and get attention and get people to listen and have some credibility. So, yeah, and like this, and is, it, this is the first time we've mentioned Trevor Knight not relating to Katy Perry in how long? I mean, so I guess when to him. Well, and it's just, I mean, it's the one guy of those has like, a way better life than all of us. He married a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader. I mean, good God. Uh, but, but if you're getting yeah. bent out of shape about like what Trevor Knight's opinion, and I like Trevor, I mean, just sure. Like, who cares? It, that's his opinion. And by the way, he's probably right. You just don't like hearing it. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's the thing of he, and look, Brent is on a, I mean, it's a propaganda campaign that he's on. I mean, and it's, it is. And you have to be. Yeah. It, and yeah. it is, you know, Cut the noise down a little bit. I mean, and you see it like it, it turns into fighting on the internet, but it's fan. It's 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 the old Crimson Corner, you know, since the beginning of time. You got doom and gloomers, and you got your sunshine pumpers. Like that's just the way it's always been. I mean, and now that's on Twitter, and they're fighting with each other. But it's just like that's the noise outside. Brent's only concerned about his team and the message that his team is getting. And anytime he gets in t in front of a microphone, and I think all good coaches do this. They use that microphone as a message to their team as much as talking to them in the locker room. Yeah. That's what all good coaches do. Yeah. Agreed. I mean, Nick Saban's the, the most famous. And, you know, it, I, I think it kind of goes back to the idea, too, that Brent could say whatever the hell he wants to say. They could tell us whatever the one, they want to tell us on Monday and Tuesday nights. But if they come out and put out that bullshit like they have the last two weeks on Saturday against Kansas. You think They're going to get booed thought, off the field. You thought yep. it was bad this week. Yeah. Like, I mean, you're talking about an apocalypse. They're going to get booed they're while they're playing the, <laughs> the, the school song. It'll be way before the school song. <laughs> At the, uh, but I'm saying, at the end, right, right. even when the, well, the, the stands actually, are yeah, people are going to stay there just to boo them. I was going to say, will there be anybody well, in the stands yeah. for the uh, for the school for the alma mater after the game? Well, but, if it goes if it's if it's if they get blanked and then you know Kansas puts up a 40 spot, it will be only parents. I've, I've said this on radio, and I I could media. very well just be completely delusional. Not only do I think they're going to score a touchdown this week, which would be a step in the right direction, but I think I think they are going to win. So maybe, Ooh. just maybe, you can get Ooh. some calming. The line is up to nine. Yeah, it opened I, at seven. And it's up to nine I to think, this morning. I, I, I think they're going to respond, but then I again, would. we've been waiting for a response for almost a month now, and simply haven't seen it. I mean, and you know, Josh, I think that you kind of put it best when it's like we. 
there's no point in even doing the Monday morning idiot nope. because there's been so much bad. Like I would love to sit here and say that there were some positives out of the Texas game. Maybe the way that they were able to run the football there. Cause there were some good spots at yep. times there were, but outside of that, there's just not a whole hell of a lot you can take out of it. That's how uh, bad it's been. I mean, guys, that, that's the first time I haven't done a Monday morning idiot in years because it was, there was, there was nothing to be gained from it. I wasn't going to learn anything that I didn't know. Like it, it, it's abominable on defense. Quinn Ewers missed some throws. Missed it could have been lot. worse than it was. You should have heard the Texas guys, Josh, thinking Quinn was just on fire. And we're like, what? The, I mean, what are you it watching? Could have, it could have easily been. Well, I mean, to be to fair, nothing. they haven't seen, you know, Heisman <laughs> Trophy winning quarterbacks left and right <laughs> that, in Texas. That was the thing. I almost, like, at the end of that game, and it, it just would have come off so petty. I didn't, but I was like, so, Texas media, how do I deal with OU fans after a loss like this? I don't know what to do. Ooh. And what to say to them. And no, I was I, like, it's it's going to come off as petty. And that's not what I was aiming at. But I was like, you guys have dealt with losses like this. I don't know what to do here. I, I asked Bob Ballou, the, uh, one of the TV guys from Austin. I was like, so what do I do here? Like, <laughs> and I think that was like the most disheartening thing after the game is just, and Carrie and I talked about it on the pod, uh, the postgame pod on Sunday. It's just, there are so many people within the program that cover the program or were, you know, once players in the program uh, alumni, fans, parents, players, coaches to a certain extent. Nobody knows how to handle this right now. This is unprecedented times. Uncharted waters. Yeah, like it, it. it's very awkward to a certain extent. Charted. I say chartered. Charted water. Uncharted. And I just eddied there. They might charter. <laughs> we should charter a plane into these waters and just drive it straight in. Um, it's awful. Speaking of, it feels more and more like after this season, there may need to be a charter bus of several. Um, the, like it, it feels like there is plenty of change coming to this roster uh, in a lot of different ways. Yeah. I mean, there's no other way to look at it. Yeah. I, gonna I, be, some people leave on their ahead. own. Some people are going to be uh -huh. forced. The, the, yep. You know it. And to me, that should give OU fans more comfort than anything in that, because I feel like, guys, we used to talk about this with Riley. Like, there was this feeling of, like, guys, they knew they needed jettison and they wouldn't do it. And it feels like that's not going to be the issue here. Like, if you're not, I mean, now don't, it's not a, oh, he's not good enough. But if, he, if a guy is not going to buy in and do the things they want him to do and play the role, you know, and be, be a team first kind of guy, I, I don't think they're going to be here long. I'm, like, I'm I, waiting I, I for the first one. I just think that's the way they see it. Because we're, mm -hmm. we're starting Agreed. to see it. Nebraska, Vanderbilt, like uh, we know SMU from like last week. I'm waiting. Who is that first guy to say, that's it, I'm out. Yeah, and it's almost a, kind of one of those things. Is like you don't want to be the first guy out <laughs> because then you're going to be labeled as the quitter. You're going to be labeled as the guy that wasn't, know, wasn't all in. After yesterday, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start a pool. It's, it's the Oes. Well, we'll see. I think I, Bob and I, Bob has a theory on this. That's right. I'm sticking with it. If he doesn't play Saturday, then I'm with you. Well, I, but, and the thing about his dad, you know, about, you know, he's giving everything to this program. And that's what I think. And, but they're like, our game plan Saturday can't include your son because our game plan is terrible. <laughs> and he's not going to get thrown I mean, the ball. Yeah, like, and if he's, he's not, not going to ever touch if it. If he's not going to block and help on the outside, he can't be a part of it. Marvin Mims' only reception was from Marcus Major. You're talking about one of the best receivers in time. If you can't yeah. get Mims the ball, you're not going to be able to get Theo. Theo and Jaden Gibson didn't play a snap, and I just think it's because they knew they aren't effective as blockers and they weren't going to be used in the passing game. If they're not on the field Saturday, then there's something to it. But at the same time, you also have Jalil Farouk as one of the guys that's really coming he's, on offensively. He's, he's tough and physical. And he's kind of making Theo Weiss, you know, but more that, and more irrelevant. Because it's Farouk, Weiss, and Mims. I mean, those mm -hmm. are the three three guys. So what Farouk does to me doesn't really change Theo's role. We saw But Theo, you're not getting enough plays, though, to spread the ball around to yeah. very many we guys. We saw Theo That's practice right. so Monday night because Eddie told him he threw a ball. Yeah, they were trying to pitch, and I just walked by. He threw it into the grass. I said, That's a ball, Theo. Ball one. One up. No, it's – it, and I don't know. It, it's almost to a certain extent – Josh, I'd love to get your thoughts on this just as far as, and we've talked about it, but it's worth rehashing. Uh, you know, the, the quarterback thing, I think both can be true. 
that that Jeff Levy, he probably, he did all he could. He, he was basically calling a game with one arm tied behind his back. He did back. all he could for the first half. Sure. And then he quit. I, I think a lot of people did. <laughs> and But at the same time, he recruited Davis Bevel. I know it was a terrible situation. He recruited General Booty. He, he obviously recruited Nick Evers. Uh, the, the, the backup quarterback situation has to be fixed in a, in a way that the University of Oklahoma should have a quarterback that can at least complete a 10-yard out route. And it doesn't seem like they have a backup that is ready to do that. But so, I mean, they kind of got screwed over by Caleb, obviously, with his decision. But at the same time, there is a little responsibility that lies there that they weren't able to go find somebody or they weren't able to sell the program enough to get somebody. And maybe that's how they handled the Dylan Gabriel thing. It was very obvious that they weren't going to get a whole lot of bites when Gabriel comes in. It just it, it wasn't going to happen. Brian like even that. said that. Yeah. Yesterday. So like, do yeah. we just live in a world that? can't comprehend people that don't follow like can't connect those dots like it that, just seems i mean everyone it's when they're mad P- people yeah. can't see it because they're emotional about it i mean it's just like and everybody OU to a knows fan holds more value i mean brent basically had to explain yesterday what happened nine months ago or yeah. ten months ago that everybody everybody was on the edge of their seat following everybody knew about jackson dart everybody knew even Chubba Purdy, I mean, like, they knew all this stuff was going along. They, they knew that Davis Bevel was in here when he was on his visit, and, uh, you know, and then General Booty came along, and just because the name, like, eh, it, Nick Evers decommits from Florida, like, that was a huge get. Like, am I completely delusional in saying that, like, if Dylan Gabriel's back, I'm not worried about the offense. Correct. They're going to they're gonna move the I'm, ball, they're going to score with points. Yeah. Defensively, they have serious structural issues in fundamentals of tackling and fitting gaps and being where against, they need to be against Texas. It showed, I mean, I think that's the thing that Brent's most frustrated about yesterday is like, he mentioned the tackling like several times. Yes. It's like all of a sudden it was alignment and fit and, uh, you know, being in the right place. And then the next game they, they, they can't tackle. It's like, yeah. He can't believe that, it, like, w- you put one finger in the dam and then another leak springs. And the sad thing is, even when it's 21 to nothing with three minutes left in the first half, if you're using TCU as, the <laughs> as like, the comparison... <laughs> the, the, the measuring stick? They played better. Yes! They yep. did play and better. It, it, today, Wednesday, October the 12th, I think that's the first day that you can actually admit that because I've wanted to say that for days. I mean, they... But everybody was like... I mean, everybody would basically like, screw you. No. Yeah. You, you, they didn't huh. play better. They were terrible. They did. When it was 21 nothing, like, and then Woody drops the interception and then it all goes to shit. Well, then yeah. Brent calls that timeout. That was just so... The timeout. That was to try a to get bizarre the ball back, timeout. Because you know field. you're getting the ball first, yeah. start well, second half. timeout. But then you give up a run for a for by third Quinn. forever. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. And but the thing about it is, and we could go back to even the uh, the fake field goal, like the that drive. It's 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 little moments where this team through six games has been given an opportunity to take momentum in a game, and they just don't have, do it. They they have you guys down their leg. Watch that fake field goal again. Uh, I, yeah. Daniel Parker touches Overshown. It's a it's a touchdown. That's all he had to is do. Is that the play that I think some people have uh, termed it as? He just he bowed out. Well, yeah. that that was on. Was that the one that Teddy good. was like? He just bowed. It could have been that, or it could have been good. the very first possession in the second half where Davis Bevel looks like he's running it on fourth down when really he's trying to throw it to Parker, but Parker has his back to him. Yeah, I mean, it's just remember it, the days when OU Texas uh, was uh, Jordan Evans just not pushing a guy out of bounds yes. and like like how yep. soft it looked and it caused like massive turmoil in the locker room and like Jordan Evans. His Scott dad. Evans like yeah, called him over God. to have a come yeah. to Jesus meeting and a yeah. film session and like yeah we need some of that up in here. I just I, I can't believe that this thing. If you would have told me back in August, and obviously we were blinded by a lot of things, we were a little bit dummy on just how big of some issues that were within the program that you were going into a the seventh game of this this entire Brent Venables era, and you're looking at it as a game in which. It's 
about as big of a must win, like just from a morale standpoint. You got to see improvement. I mean, especially with the bye, the 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 bye week coming. If you're three and four, then another week of hearing how terrible you are to lead into a week where they're going to say how terrible. And you you will have people that if they go home, their families talk to them and they decide like, okay, Oklahoma's not the place for me anymore. Yeah, I, I I think that this is a big week, and just like in terms of just looking competent. That's all I'm asking for. That's what the, <laughs> we were about to. The first drive was a three and out. And you're like, oh, man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We, maybe this is going to be a like, physical battle. And, and Danny Stutzman's flying around. Yep. He's making plays. And then the and second then drive isn't. And then it just <laughs> fizzles. It, and it, 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 it's like it, it just disappeared. And, you know, I, I think a lot of that has to do with the confidence, especially after the, uh, you know, even if you give the ball up there on the fourth day and you're not able to convert, there is an element of, Okay, they got to go 90 yards. 92 yards. yards. Yeah, they like, did it like hey. nothing. <laughs> and it was just like, just straight through it. So, by the way, I don't know. Uh, There's not so much that can be talked about at Texas yeah. anymore. It's just it's, exhausting. It's really hard to fit in uh, time for prime shrimp and dead socksy on these pods, too. So, the, if they play better, that would certainly help. Uh, but primeshrimp.com, uh, great friends of the program, great sponsors of the program. Go check it out. Josh and I, Josh is a shrimp fiend. I mean, uh, I, I'm right. a shrimp eater, uh, but he loves this stuff. Uh, and uh, they've got all the different flavors. Uh, the signature seasoned, uh, more of a Louisiana, uh, French Al Quarter Fredo, uh, French, French Al Quarter, what the hell? French Quarter Alfredo, uh, garlic herb butter, uh, then the new lemon and cracked pepper. Uh, but what you can do is go to their site. This is really easy meal prep. Uh, if you're a single dude or if you're a dad home alone, because it's girls' night out in Vegas or whatever. Uh, what you don't get it? anyway. Um, you can. It's really easy. It's less than ten minutes. You just put it in boiling water. It comes out, uh, and it is a restaurant quality meal for you. Uh, really, for two people. I mean, one package can feed two. So uh, go check them out. PrimeShrimp.com. P R I M E Shrimp.com. Use the promo code Sooner Scoop, and you'll get twenty dollars off uh, your your order. And uh, so, yeah, we can't speak highly enough. Uh, no thaw, no mess, no fuss. Uh, under 10 minutes, great meal. And there you go. It is kind of go funny. Out. I, I, was talking, I was talking to a national media Promo. member, uh, not Dan Wolken. <laughs> and it, he, he had listened to the postgame pod that we did carry. And he's like, you know what was the most funny? You know how bad I, you know how I knew that it's really bad in Norman right now? You guys didn't even talk about Texas. I do think that they are much improved. Like, yep. I, I thought they looked actually really good and it's going to be kind of interesting to see just how the big 12 shakes out over the next four weeks with texas kansas state oklahoma state and tcu kind of all playing each other here over the next couple weeks but you know this is it again it's kind of weird for oklahoma they're not involved in not in the mix and it's about building it's about like and josh i know that you've talked a lot about this just as far as it if you want to flip that switch now's the time you got to start preparing for the future and the foundation of what this program is going to be in 2023, 2024, and so forth. Yeah, I, I mean, I just put some thoughts up of, guy, of young guys that they need to know what they've got. I'm not saying, again, and people kind of took it like, well, Josh, you're saying these guys should start. No, I'm not saying you start 11 freshmen on defense. Like, that's not what I'm getting at. But there is a point where you're going to have these same conversations next year because you don't have guys with any in-game experience because you lose all these pieces that you played – in what is basically a mean I mean not meaningless I, that's that's harsh but a season that doesn't have any of the accolades you were chasing you're not going to get there's no trophies coming out of this there's nothing that like to me I I was talking to somebody the other day the biggest thing about making a bowl right now for this team is the 15 extra practices, practices and right. after that if if you if you get a COVID outbreak the day before you're supposed to report for the bowl fine you got your practice in that's all that you care about that's all that matters and it's just about getting better for next year. And I, again, like, cause I mean, this is Oklahoma, like eight and four is an irrelevant waste of time season. Like that, that's just the way it's viewed. I, I know that coaches, you know, in the process, and I, I, I get that mentality. I really do. But for, <laughs> but you're not here for, but it. for, <laughs> no, I mean, but it isn't part of the process improving. Well, okay. You better find out who you've got that can help you. In the process, because Deshaun White, Justin Broyles, those guys, they aren't coming back. They're, 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 I guess White could, right? No, that, because, that we've, no, 
he is, he is used right? it. He used it to come this back. This okay. Year. Yes. Doesn't and again, like- I don't feel like. I know a lot of people have been down on Deshaun. I don't think Deshaun's been that bad. I don't, like, think, I don't think that's been, been a huge all. problem. I'm not writing yeah. that story because I'll get crucified, but I don't think and, and, Deshaun's been and bad And his at all. play, the way he's played, has kept Kanick off the field. We've been looking yeah. for resurrections. We we need to get a uh, oh, top no. 10 crucifix, crucifixion. <laughs> it doesn't sound like you're on the uh, the road to Shreveport. Hashtag road to Shreveport with me. <laughs> are we going to Memphis? Uh, we, going to talk, Shreveport? we were talking the other day when <laughs> some of the beat writers came over to check things out uh, at the office. And uh, we were talking about the bowl situation. Like what OU, it's like the, what's the one in Dallas? It's not the Bell Helicopter. Uh, first, responders. first responders. First responders. First yeah. responders. That would be the only thing to me worthwhile is going to a bowl in Dallas. I, I'm all in on Shreveport. I think that'd be fun. I, I, well, Independence I, Bowl action. The last time I was in Shreveport was a bachelor party, and I saw the scuzzy side of Shreveport, and that's not a great. I mean, those are the people I want to be with. The good side of Shreveport's not great. Shreveport looks like the world that was built when Biff started winning all the gambling <laughs> and Back to the Future. I mean, like it's just a exactly. barren wasteland, except for these giant hotels. He gave us the great Bunky Perkins. He could be the uh, he could be our tour guide that week. But no, I I completely agree with you. You got to start seeing what is what's out there. You're, and st- I, you're slowly. Yeah. It starts with special teams. Jaden Rowe and Robert Spears Jennings are now firmly entrenched. Like you know, I'm always doing the tracker, so yeah. I'm noticing some of these guys are absolutely being brought along just a little bit more with each passing week. Yeah, it, you know I. It, again, it, it was a low. It was a it was a uh, a highlight and a low point of uh, the season. But Kip Lewis had a tackle for loss on Saturday, like, and it looked good. And yet he Deshaun identified White the play, say, made the play two, three weeks ago. That never would have happened, right? And that's what we're talking about. Then you got sink or swim. You got to put him out there. Yeah. If you thought two weeks he wasn't ready, but then you put him out there and he gets a tackle for loss his first series. That's right. Maybe he was. Might. That's right. And I, I know, was it Levy that somebody asked him about how do you feel about, you know, game day oh, players? No. Kind Gamers. Of no, 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 That's never, there's no coach on earth that's ever going to be like, yep, I really buy that. <laughs> like, that's just not going to happen. <laughs> it's like one of those questions that you're like, I, you know that answer before he, and I, and I get, that's kind of one of those things that like, I understand like why fans would want to hear his response to that. But as a media guy, we're like, asking you know the hard questions, Josh. But yeah. to me, that, oh. to me, like I'm surprised. First of all, how dare you? I'm surprised uh, that Brent Venables just wasn't like put somebody else in. Like and maybe that's when Evers went in. It's like he just decided, anybody. Yeah, just anybody. <laughs> like it just wasn't working. I mean, I. And I, I know we've, I know you guys covered that, and I don't want to kill it, but like th- there was no reason for Davis Bevel to be on the field in the second no, half. Like, no, the, we, no, we knew he should that not have wasn't come out working. as a starter after halftime. And I think it's no, equally, and it was unfair to him. It was unfair to Nick Evers to be in at four at forty nine nothing. Yeah, you're burning a game yep. for a kid. I think you shirt. put him in at thirty five nothing and say, okay, this is your sure, sure. your your start sure. forty nine nothing. Now, no one's my focus. Oh, sorry, Bob. That's all right. Sorry, That's, Bob. That, yep, go go ahead. My deal with the with the four games thing. What world are we living in that this OU team is going to have three or four mop up duties on the close uh, end? Like, that's you not could be coming. losing by forty again, sir. Yeah, like that. that you're you're right, Bob. It's an option, and that's a crazy thing. If if somebody's going to run away with this game on Saturday, I'd bet on Kansas. Yep. Like that. That's how wild this world we're living in is right now. If I had to bet, I'd, I'd bet Kansas. I mean, last week I was ready to bet, you know, the house on Texas. I don't feel that way. Oh this yeah, week. this is my last podcast, guys. Oh, that's I right. sold the house. We're 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 we're, we're closing in a couple of weeks. It's it's going to be great. Like it, it's we're really excited about all that we're getting out of well, this. That sounds like you've been illegal illegally gambling in Texas. <laughs> I will uh, I will be notifying Dan Patrick, the lieutenant lieutenant governor. They probably got we, uh, some. We, we, they probably got some uh, illegal riverboats over there. In the Gulf, yeah, sure. Not, not, not far from Shreveport, I guess. Technically, no. Oh, I mean, we're we're right by. Um, oh, what's the little god town on the way to New Orleans? Uh, uh, great, great line here. Really worked this out well. But uh, just on the other side of the board, uh, <laughs> God, Shreveport. You go, you go, uh, no Beaumont, idea. and then boof, and it's right there. Uh, that one. Damn it! I'll think of it here in a little bit when it doesn't <laughs> oh, make God. any they sense. Pull anymore. up Google Maps. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's what I'm going to do. But I'm just, you know, you guys talk through it while I while I work this out. No, but the I mean the gamer thing, like it's just like oh, I wish he hadn't 
first off, I almost wish the question hadn't been asked, but it was a good question. Uh, I think Ryan Chapman asked yep. that. Mm-hmm. Um, he did. But uh, it was a good. It was a really good question. It, it needed to be asked. But the answer is, you know, you're a coach. You want your players to earn their way by practicing well. You can't That's admit the only to the thing fact that like I thought Jeff might add to it. It's like if I put someone in who didn't earn it during practice, that would create some issues. Like this guy sucked Monday through Thursday. But I'm like, yeah. But we'll you forfeit the right Saturday. to be the better player when you go out on the field and suck. Yeah. The, the, the bigger question in all of that is. By the is, way, Eddie showed me the Davis Bevel highlights the other day. I can't believe it's the same quarterback. Oh, the the thing that uh, Stoops Rhodes put up. Uh-huh. Yeah. It, I mean, the YouTube thing. And I know that it was a inter squad scrimmage. At For the most Pitt, part, it was like they're blue and but, gray or gold I mean, or whatever. I mean, he looks like a different person. Like he's he's throwing the football down the field, and it's almost kind of shocking. It, it the the bigger question here is is and this is what Brent Venables has hinted at you know multiple times here over the last month what is happening Monday through Thursday that is not translating, translating. to Saturday and I'm at the point now where it's like I don't give a fuck what you guys have to do if it's new players if it's dumbing down the scheme do whatever you literally have to do and I'm not even saying to win a football game to be competent enough to play four quarters. You got enough coaches on that sideline. When things start going off the rails, they should be able to have some sort of an idea of how to get it back. Yeah. And that's what's surprising. The the thing that I can't get over Bob is the fact that this isn't like, I could understand like 98 to 99 is a perfect example. It was like, these guys are trying to learn how to win. They, They haven't won. They haven't been a part of a program that knows how to close out a football game. That's far from the case. You can say whatever you want about this defense over the last five, six, seven, eight years, which shit, that's a long time, but they've been a part of really good programs. They've been a part of really good teams, but they haven't been carrying the program. But They haven't been part yeah. of good, good units. Yeah. Right? And I, I, I think that they've that's, been bailed out a lot. It's completely fair to say that it, and that is definitely one of those things that has, you know, obviously come to uh, the forefront here over the last couple of weeks and they just, they simply, and I, I go back to the idea that, you know, Carrie, I was telling you that I think that there's a lot of guys on this defense and, you know, Justin Broyles is a perfect example of this that simply hasn't been a part of good defenses. They've been beaten down to a point where their confidence level is so low. It doesn't that, take much to get it low. Yeah. Too. And, and, and you go, you know, you get down by 21 and it's kind of like, who gives a shit? And you we'll think try about next it, week. Your best player. They're I mean, just, Britt Venables called Woody Washington one of their best players yesterday. Yeah, and he's the guy that had two pass interference calls in Fort Worth and, you know, somewhat critical moments early in that game. But he's also a guy that played in that LSU game. Like sure. 100%. He's seen some shit, man. 100%. All those guys have. And I think that there's just a level of, like, you can say whatever you want about him. You can tweet him. The, the criticism... Uh, is obviously there, and it's it's warranted, as Brent said yesterday. But there is some level of like, there's there's no help for some of these guys. And if that's the case, you got to start moving on. Yep, uh, guys, I, I I think, and it's honestly really fair that a lot of people have asked, you know, and I brought this up a couple of times. What does this team look like last year if Dylan Gabriel is a quarterback? Just flip that. Mm-hmm. And how many? How different is the outcome last year? And you're I, there's seven and five. What are they? Best. Eight and five? Like yeah. yeah, seven and six. I mean something like that. Like they're they're not special. And you're like okay. And that was a team that had a front seven with a lot of NFL guys in it. You know, maybe not like elite front line NFL guys, but you know Isaiah Thomas off to a nice start. Brian Osamo is playing. Well. You know, th- there are some pieces that you're like, okay, yeah. There's five pieces but, on that defense yeah, that are all won. on NFL rosters. Whether I mean, come it be on, Dylan Turner, Yell, Brian Osamoa, Isaiah Thomas, Nick Benito, Perrin Winfrey. Those are five guys that you know. And I, I asked Teddy the other day. It's like, were we just dummies for thinking that everything was going to be okay because Brent had come and because of the resume that those guys had, it was just going to be one of those. They're going to figure it out. They'll figure it out. And obviously, they haven't. I don't know. Maybe looking back on it, hindsight's always 2020, obviously. But it was a lot bigger losing those guys than we initially thought. I, I think your, by the way, I think your, your prediction is crap. I mean, they won five games with Spencer Rattler as their quarterback. They didn't play well. He was really well. good, though. 
when? 2020. Are you talking about 2020? I'm talking about last year. I thought you said last year. Yeah. Yeah. Last year. Yeah. They don't beat Texas. With Gabriel? They don't beat Texas, but they, they... they win. So they're five three and right there. I don't think that they, I don't. Do, Spen- they, do they beat Kansas? Spencer Rattler. I don't think they beat Kansas. Finest moment. I don't think they beat Iowa State. I think Kansas they beat, State. I think they beat Kansas. Spencer's best yeah. moment. Yeah. I mean, it's. A, I mean, it's a, Caleb Williams played like shit in that game, and they still won it. And this, yeah, but, but he also he used his legs. Yeah. He did something yeah. Gabriel couldn't do. And they, and I, I would say though Gabriel that like has a sixty-one yard touchdown or whatever. And all year. of this, and talking about Gabriel coming back even this week. Part of the offensive problems through those first four games when he was playing was Dylan Gabriel. He has to play better. No, yep. I mean, he's not been great. Yeah. And, and it's just like we were saying with, with Quinn Ewers and Texas fans, like, that's the best they've ever seen. We've seen better. Like, we know the standard of, of what a great Heisman Trophy performance type winning sure. season looks and like. I think at the end of the day, though, it's like without Caleb Williams and, you know, obviously a generational quarterback. They're definitely not nine and zero going into that Baylor week. No, I didn't say the that they would. No, be. I know you're not. But I'm, I'm saying they would have. I think they would have been better than eight and five. I mean, I think they would have been a three loss team with Dylan Gabriel. I, I, and I, I can buy that. I, I mean, that, that. that's reasonable. I, I, I'm just saying there's there the but, but again, problems Caleb Williams played like obvious. shit against Baylor too. Yeah, he was awful. But that was also and the with second a second half. He wasn't very that was, good. That was also player. with a uh, offense that was being called by a coach that had a foot out the door. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. <laughs> no, it it it's it kind of is what it is. Like all of the you know blame that can be put on last year or how this program has been run over the last couple of years, getting to this moment, everything's a part of it. And then you can also say that this team has underachieved massively. Yep. That's my biggest thing. Everybody wants to make it one thing. Like, oh, it's just this or it's just that. It's complex. It's like, a multitude it's that, of things. Yep. To fall and, and this that's why far, it's it has to be yep. a ton of shit. And I think that's like, the, I, that's the most startling thing is how far this thing has dropped. That's where I start going, going back to like Sunday when I was in a, a very, very dark place. <laughs> it's like, that's where, like, I think the doubt. It's only human to start thinking about the doubt and, like, shit, is this headed in the direction that Nebraska was headed in? And then you start grasping for reasons why it shouldn't be. But, you know, I I feel much better about the situation today than I did, you know, a couple days ago. But, again, we could come back in here Saturday night after the uh, the Kansas game and be saying, you know, basically that our worst fear was confirmed that this thing is headed in the wrong direction still. Now, here's one thing. Or if, if we're ready to go with Josh recruiting, this is the mm-hmm. first week. I mean, this, this is, is how bad it's been. Big, this is the positive. This is the big weekend, right? This is They're bringing guys. You, you've been able to lay an egg in Fort Worth. You weren't going to be hurt there. It stinks to invite all those guys to Dallas and, you know, suck there too but if you have a home weekend official visit weekend and you can't bring it would that finally be something that gets you know the ball rolling in the wrong direction you know with the reaction i've gotten this week which has been incredible yeah i'm like i think this class is going to hold together pretty well almost regardless of what you know short of something just wild that is like a you know foundational change like coaches start moving you know that kind of stuff like that but just what happens on the field and everything else remains status quo i i I think they're going to hold a good chunk of this class together i really do now there's going to be people that are going to be like, this is not what I signed up for. Like, this, I, I, I thought I, I was coming into a team that's competing for the playoff next year, that kind of thing. So, I mean, there's no way you don't lose anyone. But I, I've been really impressed with how level-headed some of this stuff is. And, guys, because part of it is when I talk to a lot of these guys, they're in lockstep with the coaches. Yeah. Like, the – the the fans are being crazy. Like, they've got to understand there's differences here. There's things – and you're like – Wow, I mean, they're bought in like that, that. That is, you know, Brent's all in stuff like that. That's that's what it reads like when I'm talking to these guys, and you know, and, and again, I, I don't want to. I want to be clear. These guys aren't like, oh, the fans are stupid. It's not like that. It's just they don't understand what's going on behind closed doors. And I think these guys 
are they're coming with questions. They're asking these coaches like what what what's going on here? And I think there has been a good level of transparency from the coaching staff to the recruits of hey, these are these are growing pains, like these are things we 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 kind of knew we were going to have to go through. And I think that's calming the water a lot. Um, yeah, cause I, I even heard a Jackson Arnold rumor and I, you know, we, we, I talked about it in woke mm-hmm. and I want to be clear. Like everybody I've talked to is like, there's nothing there. Like he, he's, he, you know, again, he, and he told me, he goes, I wish it was going better, but I have a lot of faith they're going to turn this around. And like we said a second ago, Jackson Arnold can't feel that bad. Cause like when Dylan Gabriel has been healthy, that offense has moved the ball. It's just, it's had a problem, you know, when he hasn't been out there. It's been god awful. I guess my, my my biggest question for the last couple of weeks: maybe you can sustain what you've got, which is a tremendous class, but yeah. can you win any the of the battles that are going to be coming up? That I mean, that's the thing because this weekend, I mean, you're really talking about two of really the you could argue the two most key pieces that Oklahoma still has left. On the board, and Caden McDonald, McDonald and Cecilia Kana, which are two guys I've been able to confirm today, are still expected to come in yep. for their official visits this weekend. So, uh, you know, obviously 11 a.m. kick, both by guys being from different time zones. There are some challenges there, but it sounds like Oklahoma still expects to bring those guys in. Um, I, Cecilia Khan is interesting, like, because I, I thought Oklahoma clearly led for him in the summer. It feels like that's cool just a little bit, but I still think Oklahoma's absolutely there, and he's a guy that Brent Venables, I know, has put a lot of energy into. Uh, Caden McDonald, that relationship with Todd Bates, I mean, guys, we've seen it. Like, every time we think, like, oh, this staff can't do it, they just went on relationship, which is not something we're always accustomed to seeing. And I... I wouldn't, I wouldn't rule them out in either of these things, but I'm, I'm with you, Bob. Like, to me, the focus has to be, let's keep these guys together. Like, that, that has to be the primary thought. And then whatever else we can add is whatever else we can add. Like, that, that's great. I think Caden McDonald would be so massive for this class. It's kind of hard for me to put it in words. He's a guy that, he's an anchor that you build a Brent Venables defense around. He's always got those great nose tackles that just, just, you know, just eat up blocks. Free the linebackers to run the ball. Like you look at his best OU, best Clemson defenses. That was a that was a hallmark of those groups. And I, I think Cade McDonald could be that kind of guy. I think he is tremendously talented. And then you add another pass rusher like Akana. If you can hold on to Colton Vosick and um, uh, PJ Adabare, I mean that's a monstrous defensive uh, defensive end class. And then again, that forgets Derek LeBlanc, who I'm actually going to get a chance to see this weekend. Which one has the best sock game? Ooh, I mean, I don't know. We don't know which dead Soxy guy there is, but I mean, may, maybe that needs to be part of. It. I mean, that's that's the next nil dead Soxy deal. Why don't we just make them buy and impress us? Uh, you know, do they have I, a promo code we could use? <laughs> <laughs> they do, Eddie. I'm so glad you asked. Uh, yeah, deadsoxy.com. Go check out our good friends. D e a d s o x y dot com. Uh, you can uh, shop all their different collections, uh, including the no shows, uh, which is still time to wear the no shows out there. It's not not exactly cold, cold yet. It's gonna be eighty this weekend. Oh, it's gonna be awesome. Sorry, Eddie. Uh, yeah, I was I was hoping for like low eighties. Sounds like we're gonna get gonna high eighties, like that's sweaty eighties. Okay. Okay. Yes, I'll have the I'll have the no shows. Tons of dress socks though, uh, not just the team colorways, but you can uh, uh, get something for the office as well. Uh, but just just great socks. I mean, they've been featured in, in all kinds of magazines like GQ, Men's Health, Esquire, uh, Forbes. So uh, go check them out uh, and use that promo code SCOOP and you'll get uh, 25% off your entire order. That's deadsoxy.com. Uh, some are saying the new standard in socks. That's what GQ called them. So we love them. Uh, we keep buying and we want you guys to uh, love them too. So go check it out. Deadsoxy.com. And as always, remember, stay soxy. All That's right. not the standard. You uh, you have any more recruiting you want to get to? It would just be, I've seen, me and Eddie have seen Jacoby Johnson like four or five times, and we're going to see him again Thursday against Union. Josh, what is he as a corner? I still don't know. I, it's so hard because, like, no one throws at him, and I get it. I wouldn't either. Like, I mean, that this is not this is very much in line with what Carrie and I were talking about, talking about earlier. This is not me questioning the Edmund Santa Fe coaching staff. I wouldn't throw at his ass either. Like, he's really talented. The thing I notice is he looks so much more like when 
on a few occasions when a Santa Fe receiver would, you know, really run and not just be like, you know, you're not doing anything, I'm not doing anything, let's just kind of pat each other on the butt and we'll go about it the next Davis play. Bevel, Jameson, uh, yes. Yeah, it, it very much, very much that kind of vibes uh, on Jacoby Johnson's side of the field. But there was, um, but he is so much smoother and more natural with his pedal and his turn. Like he looks a lot cleaner. Um, I guess it's probably been a year since I've seen Jacoby really go. And I, I saw him in the spring. That's not right. But I mean, he just looks better and better. Obviously, his frame is incredible. I mean, he he's what you draw up. As a uh, as a young corner, like I mean, just big, strong, sturdy guy that could easily move to safety if corner doesn't work out. And with his ball skills, safety might be better for him. Like I, I, there's a there's an argument for that. There's something that makes sense to me in that way. Um, at the same time, he's not overly physical, so I don't know. I mean, there's there's a give and take to that conversation. I I love the talent. I love the upside. There's so much potential there. Um, and, you know, was talking to some people there, and that, that's really what it comes down to is what his maturation is like. As, as he embraces, I'm a football player, and, you know, Bob could speak to, you know, better what the plans might be with basketball and that kind of stuff, because I know Bob's covered a lot more of that side of it. There is, as a football player, he's going to have to embrace that it's that that's where his bread is buttered. That's who he's going to be. That's where his time has to be. That's where his you know his lifting and all that stuff. Where you know, and, I, and I've heard guys who have done multi sport talk about this. And I think Teddy has even talked about it at some points. In that football is a different kind of uh, a different kind of resolve. Like I mean, it's just a different thing because you're physically straining every single moment. And that's not to say that basketball players aren't incredible athletes. They are. There's just not the physical rigor and demand every single play. And so it'll be interesting to see. And that's hard to know with him for Mustang right now because as a receiver, he he kind of just runs his you know the corner away from the ball. And they've got to stay with him because he's the most dangerous guy on the field. So if he just runs away, he's done the same thing as a real block. And then as a corner, they're not going to throw at him. So he just doesn't get asked to do a lot snap in and snap out and it'll be really interesting to see what it looks like when he just gets to practice and every day is facing guys who are his physical equal a guy from in-state that you've mentioned on the board this week eric fields kind of coming out of nowhere the uh, kid from ardmore he is a guy i've liked since he was a sophomore and then finally when he had some tape that like because i i saw him in like bits and pieces and it happens sometimes uh, you know, kind of in these more rural areas. And I mean, not that Ardmore is really country, but I mean, just not a huge social media presence there and a lot of video being put out. Um, but watching him, I mean, this guy, last I had heard, he was like 6'2", 170, was kind of going to be a safety type. Talking to his coaches this week, he's more like 6'3", 205. And you watch his tape, he's all over the place and just killing people. Um, and looks... Uh, somebody made the comparison and I don't think it's crazy from a just what the tape looks like there's some Kenneth Murray vibes there because he's coming from deep and just tracking ball you know tracking the ball all over the field like he is so clearly the best athlete on the field his father was a big time athlete from everything I understand boxer so cover, I covered him for yeah. years really okay yeah no kidding because he used to he was with the Zudi family management and they used to fight at Remington Park no in the shit. Cox Convention Center that's crazy I covered it like five or six of his fights I did not know wow. that. We, but this Cruiser is something way. I'm learning Cruiser right now boxer. That, we forget that Bob had a life as a real journalist back in the day you know, <laughs> 6'2 175 like when you say 6'3 205 that certainly does change almost everything Everything. I know that's a little bit unfair just to base it off of measurables, but it, it does offer you the idea like, oh, this guy could come and put on 20 pounds in college, 25, 30 pounds. Oh, I, there's there's no question. I mean, he is a – because you look at it on tape, you're like, that guy looks like a, a small Ford. Like, he's all big and long-armed and long-legged, and you're like, there's plenty of room for him to grow and get bigger. Now, um, what I was initially told – was that oh he's a full qualifier? As I've checked around and talked to some people that have that are a little more in, involved directly in it, it sounds like he's close. Like the, the, it, it's one of those things he could become a full qualifier right now. He probably is not. Now what's interesting is there are some, I, and I I won't claim I understand it fully enough 
to say this is or is not true in his case. But there are some COVID exemptions that are out there for these guys to qualify and guys that could kind of get in due to, you know, they were so long out of school and some, some of these other problems that these guys that are seniors now faced as, you know, freshmen, sophomores, that kind of stuff. So there are, there's a little bit of nuance to his situation that's going to be interesting to track. But uh, guys, I mean, if, if he becomes a full qualifier, this is a guy that I don't think it's crazy if OU got involved with. He's, he's that talented. It's just going to be a matter of, a, if they feel they have room for him, what he would do. Like, there's a conversation about him maybe being a cheetah type of guy. Um, th- there are a lot of, di- and again, I don't think Oklahoma's had any conversation with him. So I don't want to misrepresent this and say, oh, this could be the next guy. I'm just saying down the road, maybe in the late signing period, he's a guy you could see kind of blow up. And then you mentioned you're going to go see Derek this weekend? Yeah, I've got got a little Florida swing here. I'm uh, going to go see Derek LeBlanc and Lewis Carter this weekend, and I can't readily remember which order. One's Thursday, obviously. One's Friday. Can't remember which one's which at this point. Fantastic. Um, yeah, yeah. But, you know, Derek LeBlanc is like two weeks removed from a five-sack, four-and-a-half tackle for loss. Or, no, it was like six-and-a-half tackles for loss, five sacks. Like, it was this insane game. And I literally, like, you couldn't find the stats anywhere. I just watched his highlight tape from that week, and it was just him, sack, sack, sack. So i really anxious to see him because he's a unique guy. He's one of the guys I've really had trouble gauging um, because he's kind of a, he's a unique body type. He's a little different. I don't know that I've seen a guy quite like him. Real long-armed, kind of long torso. It's, it's just a... It's a very interesting thing, but I, I see him as a three-tech all day for Oklahoma after he probably has a year in the program, gets stronger, puts a little weight in his lower body, that kind of stuff. Um, so I, I think that's where you see him start to take off. But again, if you could, add, you know, you keep him, you can land, you know, McDonald or Akana, just both would be great, but either one. And then you throw in with the two defensive ends you've got. That's just an incredible defensive line class. And I would, and, I would say, like, LeBlanc seems like one of those kids in this moment of uncertainty for a lot of people. Well, his dad. His dad's been <laughs> very outspoken, like, hey, as long as Todd Bates and Brent Venables are there, do not worry about us. We coming. I, I heard a rumor that Penn State had been pushing. So I checked with dad, and he was like, yeah, Penn State, Miami, Florida, He's like, but we're Sooners. Like, I mean, like, it was just like, yeah, that's not, we don't, they can say whatever they want to, we're in. Well, you're not and leaving so, Oklahoma for Florida, no, or for Miami, no matter what happens. Florida or Miami right yeah. now. It's not like they're, either one of those two are lighting the world on fire. So, um, and that's, and guys, that's one of the interesting little sub stories is there's always this talk of Samson Oak and Lola just kind of hanging around with OU a little bit and hanging around, and he plays his games on Saturday, so it's really tough for him to get out for an official during the season. Um, but if Miami continues to really sputter and OU can kind of find their feet, maybe that gets interesting down the stretch. I'm not saying I, I like that is a hypothetical, you know, if, if chips fall correctly – maybe down the road because one of the other schools that Samson was supposed to be really big on is Michigan State and they're vomiting all over themselves. A lot of teams doing that. Uh-huh. So I know it's it's an interesting thing and that's why this could be a really interesting close cuz like I said if Oklahoma can find their feet and just 7 and 5, 8 and 4, be respectable, show a nice bounce back after a brutal, you know, late September early October then I, th- there are some guys out there that I think they could steal. And with what we're talking about, with there probably being a lot of um, jettisoned pieces of the current roster, OU's going to have scholarships to give. So that, that'll, be, that'll be interesting to watch and see how that plays out. It is kind of a good representation of just how bad things have been around here, that there are other schools that are shitting on themselves. But it doesn't. It doesn't make it feel any. It doesn't make anybody feel better about the situation here. Yeah, I mean, like A and M goes in. They're three and three. Arkansas shit. Like, Michigan State's been awful. Miami, and Miami. All these schools have like truly have been just as bad as OU. But OU's been so bad. It doesn't make anybody well, feel better. I mean, at least with Miami, you could kind of see it coming. I mean, like I, I did I it. But I really? the ball. When, and I thought Van Dyke was going to be really yeah. good. He's been awful. But you can't lose at home to Middle Tennessee. No, you can't lose at home to Kansas either. So exactly. Let's, let's, and then let's you look table up, this conversation. But then you look up and it's Ohio State, Georgia, and Alabama. Yeah. 
Like everyone else, you're just screwing this up. Like there's a Clemson's every border. Year, Clemson's borderline. borderline I'm yes, a, I might be bought back in on Clemson. They they've played pretty they, well. They're over getting the last better. Weeks they have a big one this week. Lele Lulu is playing better. Uh, the uh, the the Saturday looks like a real you, quarterback again. Saturday how pissed are you awesome. if you're Virginia? You took Tony Elliott. All of a sudden, DJ Ungalele is playing like a reasonable quarterback. And Brennan Armstrong, who was great last year, looks like dog shit. Yeah. Like, the, uh, what's the common denominator in those two changes? Mm. Like, there's three. That's great big games this weekend, though. I mean, OSU TCU is amazing. Uh, Michigan State, Penn State, I guess, yeah. if that does anything for you, even though Penn State's one of those teams, you know, they don't get beat that. on that first night, uh, have to come back, beat Purdue, Aiden O'Connor, and then. You look up and it's like, oh, they're undefeated right now. And then obviously the big one over in Knoxville with uh, Josh Heupel, the number one offense in the country, and that's going to be balls crazy. going against Alabama. So I three I big, mean, three big undefeated games. Not, I'm still holding out hope for the Utes to take down Trojans. Yeah, that's that can't even hate there. watch it anymore. It's like <laughs> I've, I've, I'm past the point of hate watching. I think I I'm got, actually just watching to watch now. Yeah, I really am. It's like I know the play. I know. Oh, there's Gentry. Good play. Like it's just like you know you're you starting know to the learn teams, the yeah, players. Yeah. Uh, Interceptions and sacks it makes no sense. Well, and I, I, I can't 50, watch <laughs> that defense and be like, "What the hell was happening? Like, why is this working?" Because that's exactly what yep. Grinch's yeah. methodology is, and it just works. And I'm like, "What? Why?" Well, like I know these pieces aren't better. Fifty five brought it up on the board, and you know there is one constant in all of Oklahoma's defensive struggles here. You know, over the we'll go small sample size over the last two three years. It's the players, like the the coach that got all the shit from the fan base a year ago. And over the past two or three years, he's gone out to L.A. and put together a pretty good product. A new coaching staff has come in, and all of a sudden, it's these coaches' fault. There's one constant in all of this. Yep. And I, they, it sucks to say that. Like I'm not trying to just completely take shots at everybody on this defense, but. It is what it is. Everybody knows it. Uh, I'll say again, like the, and it, it's it's not a talent thing. I don't. I just don't believe that. I don't believe Kansas is more talented or TCU is more talented than Oklahoma. I, I don't believe that. Are there? Is there something clearly wrong outside of your physical talent? Yes, one hundred percent. Something is there. Like Brent keeps saying, there's a disconnect somewhere. I don't know where it is. But you're just not going to tell me that man for man, Kansas doesn't recognize that OU has better pieces, better personnel than they do, but they're not playing nearly as well as a unit. There's the, no argument. The salt in the wound, I think, is somebody like a tech that you've seen them kind of rejuvenate themselves under Joey McGuire and be really competitive, take OSU late into the fourth quarter, mm -hmm. beat Texas and Lubbock. And it's like, I mean, they had their third string quarterback was throwing the ball all over OSU the last kid. week. I, it just, I was reminded, though, he was an Elite 11 participant. He, oh, he, he's the highest-ranked quarterback signing Tech's ever had. Yeah. Like, Morton's a big deal. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, relatively speaking. Uh, like, their but, third string is not general booty. No. No, that's fair. And, and, you know, and at least, and he's been working with those receivers for a long, like, he knows he's a little more familiar and is, uh, again, like, that, that's my whole thing with that deal, like, there is the people that thought Oklahoma could just put Davis Bevel in there and we're going to run the offense. No, at the same time, expecting more than what you got is completely reasonable. Like there's there, both those things can be true. Like you should, there should have been more available to Oklahoma's offense than what they got. At the same time, we all knew it was going to be a massive fall off from Dylan Gabriel to whoever was behind him. Well, what we knew is that the, if the defense didn't play wetter, well, and they. With that defense and no Dylan Gabriel, they had no shot, and they had no shot. Yeah, because guys, like Bob said earlier, that's a good Texas team. Like if they go ten and two, I'm not going to be surprised in the least. That's a that uh, that and that offense in particular, there are weapons everywhere. They've got they're going to cause a lot of problems the rest of the season. Sanders was, <laughs> I mean, he's so damn good. He's Jatavian yeah. Sanders. Yeah. He's a tight end. That guy, Who knew? That guy is a dude. I'm not letting go of it, Bob. He's a defensive end. I'm still pissed off about it. He's, he's a perfectly fine tight end. You're passed up tens of millions of dollars to be a pass rusher. Whatever. Not bitter.
Okay. Uh, this is like the post game. We have to stop talking about Texas at some point. Some point. Just, yeah. It, my it, skin starts to crawl when it is what it is. I I know that to a certain point. You know it. it they just there. There has to be conversations within the program, and I would hope they've already happened this week. That you look at everything, whether it be you know meetings with players, meetings with coaches. I'm going to say this: the drain I'm gonna, of what this thing has been. Yeah, I mean, I just have to say this: and my skin is crawling. Like I think Brent has done enough talking. He's 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 done enough trying to reach these players. So he's done he, when you got guys like Chavis and, and and Barnes and all these guys on the staff that you know can you know are good coaches that can reach people that are motivational that uh, speak their language like with Chavis. Like I don't think that there's any way the message is not being sent. If it doesn't happen, they go out there and look like shit. It's on the players now to me. Yeah, no, I mean, there's only so much on defense, you can say. On defense. There's only so much you can say, and I think that's that's the, the place that you don't want to have to have the conversation of, they've tuned this guy out. And if well, that's the case, yeah, you're it, looking at it. I'm a, sure a they will. If, eight, they, if they play nine. like shit and they tune him out, they will. But we'll at least know that this team just doesn't have football And we're having much defense. serious conversations about you know the direction of the program if this thing is three and how nine, long right? does it stay like down? You start mm-hmm. talking about a leash and you start talking about, well, how much time are they going to give them and all that kind of stuff. And that is, you know, those are uncomfortable conversations that I don't think anybody wants to have. Let's wait till after Kansas to have them because I'll be here on Saturday. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> no, no, I, they're going to win though. So I, that's okay. Okay. It, it, hopefully we see a spark, hopefully a yeah. start of something. Yeah. A win is very much needed. Guy sent me a, a screenshot of an email from OU sending out uh, offers to buy tickets for twenty five dollars for this in the Baylor game. So it's yeah. I don't know what that crowd's going to look like. Saturday. Well, and you know, I I, I guess it just kind of. I'm not asking fans to show up and cheer. Like I'm not doing that. But do keep in mind that you know, and Josh just kind of outlined there are going to be recruits there. If you want this thing to get better. The last thing you want to do is for a kid to show up at 11 a.m. and think these people don't give a shit. Like it, it is what it is. Like, well, if the they, you can't tell they boo. If the crowd starts booing the whole game, <laughs> yeah, that will like, not, it's, it's yeah. just not a good look for anybody. Like it, it, in a way, and I'm not. It is what it is. Everybody was frustrated on Saturday at the Cotton Bowl, but like, you know, you look up in the middle of the second quarter and you know students are chanting, "We want booty." It just. It's, it it kind of makes my screen my skin crawl, you know, thinking that like Jackson Arnold's sitting there in the stands, and you know, I again, it, it's not like a big thing, but it's just like, and I don't think that people truly think about that when they've had twelve wax cup beers and maybe a couple party flavors in their nose before the game, but it just it is what it party is, like flavors, flavors, flavors. It could be a flavor. I don't know. I don't. I don't know what fentanyl's doing these days. I'm sorry, I'm slowing you down. No, but Go. Uh, I'm done. I'm done. That's just like, got to keep that in mind when this thing is a shit show. I'm not defending it, but keep that in mind when you go into the stadium on Saturday. All right. I don't think it could be worse, but maybe it could. I will let you have the last word. Uh, that's going to do it for I went this to a edition. baseball scrimmage last night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the last word. I'm done. I'm done. They, they look fun. John, uh, John Spikerman was on base four times and stole four bases. So what does happen if you answer a porn bot on uh, twitter dms where does it take you like are you just I getting no catfished idea, man i get like so many a day because my dms are open yeah oh, mine are too God. i get a bunch of them i'm just curious like what happens like where does that go i have no idea is, is it are they they do they extract the money immediately like is it the very next question is can i have money for pictures or something that's been my experience yeah um <laughs> and then i pay them and then it just it seems to go fine from there <laughs> all right josh has got to get out of here as well uh, happy birthday tiffany by the way mrs mcquishan <sighs> today is the actual day right She's, today is the day she she's sitting in the other room happy waiting. birthday Tiff. Paying, me, paying me absolutely no mind well good just come and say hi to everybody yeah, she, she's going to pass on that. This is this is where Laney wow. gets it from. Lay, Layla's Layla's I'm me hurt. talk that shit all day. I'm hurt. So. All right, well, <laughs> all right. That's going to do it. We'll be back again uh, next week, hopefully. 
talking about repairing and healing this season. So (laughs) we'll see you next week right back here on another edition of the Unofficial 40 Podcast from Soonerscoop.com.